China's space station is falling to Earth. Run for cover, people. All of this and more here on Stream On. Good morning, friends. Hi there. My name is Brooke Bergsteller, and you're watching Stream On here on the Stream.tv. I'm here to dish you the dirty deets about everything that's happening on planet Earth through your favorite social media platforms. I'm joined in the studio by Jake Palmer, who'll be pulling user comments, and Johnny Loquasto, who we'll be hearing from later on in the show. But let's get it started with what is trending on Facebook, or as I like to call it, Fachi Book. I'm going to get that trending, you guys. So, of course, you've probably heard by now, Angelina Jones and Brad Pitt are getting divorced. <gasps> I'm not that upset. I'm just super stoked that I might be able to sleep with Brad Pitt now. So here's what happened. The two have cited irreconcilable differences. And, you know, I don't think it was infidelity. That's not really uh, any of what is happening in the rumor mill right now. Apparently, it's because Brad and Angelina saw differently as to how to parent their children. They have six kids, so I can imagine that it gets a little bit chaotic in that household and that there might be differing opinions on how to manage a literal family band. So the two met in 2000. Four on the set of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, of course, and Brad Pitt was married to Jennifer Aniston, who I'm sure is just laughing her ass off right now at this whole ordeal. Uh, and Pitt divorced Aniston to get with Angelina Jolie. So while they were together for so long, the two actually only tied the knot two years ago, and their divorce papers were filed two years and one month after their wedding anniversary. So, um... Sorry, guys, but uh, if anyone has any information on how I can reach out to Brad Pitt, I'll just start, you know, knocking on doors and see what happens. So uh, whose door will I not be knocking on? Well, Elon Musk's. It. Musk's? Musk's. Is. Musk's. Because apparently he's going to be living on Mars, or he's trying to get us all to live on Mars. So his SpaceX program is said to be on a mission in 10 years, although he says it could only be nine years. Now... Uh, the chief of SpaceX said that I'm certain that success is one of the possible outcomes for establishing a self-sustaining Mars colony, adding that a few years ago, he wouldn't have been able to make these claims with the same confidence. However, if you do listen to that quote carefully, he says, success is one of the possible outcomes of colonizing Mars. So there are obviously a lot of other possibilities as well. And then Elon Musk said, do we want a future where we are forever confined to one planet? Or do we want to become a multi-fantasy species and ultimately be out there among the stars? Well, Elon, I'm busy just paying my bills while you're busy fantasizing about being a multi-fantasy species. So I think we're just, you know, at different levels here. But that is some Star Wars shit, you guys. I was totally comfortable with staying here on good old planet Earth. But now that I've got my gears turning, what if we did just send all of the douchebags to Mars, like the Kardashians and Justin Bieber, and had them all live there, and then we could keep our planet safe and happy? I think that would be really, really dope. So um, here's to 2026, Kardashians colonizing Mars. All right, Disney's under flack right now because they unleashed a Halloween costume for their new film, Moana, which is about... Um, a Polynesian Hawaiian demigod and <laughs> they released a Halloween costume of a brown, a brown face so the costume is a full body zip up linked to the character and it features brown skin with traditional Pacific tattoos, a grass skirt, and a bone necklace. Now, Polynesian activists have accused Disney of promoting brown face and said that they're trying to make a profit off of the back of another culture's beliefs and history. And the New Zealand Human Rights Commission actually called out Disney and said, we hope Disney listens to the views of the communities and people whose cultures their movies are based upon. Now, I know that this is kind of offensive, but, like, here's the thing. Is anyone even going to buy this costume? The movie doesn't come out until after Halloween. It comes out November 23rd. So unless these kids are, like, baby geniuses or, like, incessantly watching the trailer, I don't think we're going to have too many of these uh, demigods walking around. So everyone cool your jets. And people of the Internet 
Cool your jets, stop picking on Corey Feldman. I'm just kidding, it's absolutely hysterical. Hopefully you saw the train wreck that was Corey Feldman performing Go For It on the Today Show. And that is Go, the number four it, which is like, oh, um, already I'm like, oh, Corey, why, why? So he went viral after appearing on the show because it was a tragic performance and then uploaded a video of him sobbing on Facebook because all these cyber bullies were picking on him. He said, we put ourselves out there and we did the best that we could. And like, I've never had such mean things said about me. Like constantly, you don't have to beat us up. But I feel like sometimes we need a friend who tells us that like, it's not a good look. Like what we're doing just is not working. So maybe you can thank the cyber bullies after all and for making you become relevant again. The video went totally viral. He appeared on The Talk, at, which is a talk show. And now he's being asked to come back to the Today Show for an encore performance. Holy Moses, Jake, please make some sense of this for me. What are people talking about? this story on Facebook. Well, I have a comment from one of those internet trolls right here. Uh, <laughs> Facebook user Joseph McGowan says, in all caps, mind you, mediocrity is the norm now. While very true, uh, I think that this comment is almost as much of a train wreck as the actual Today Show performance. Mediocrity breeds mediocrity, so keep it coming. It's a lot of fun to watch. All right, all right. Thank you, Jake. Um, not as offensive as I really wanted it to be, but... Um... <laughs> All right, this is as offensive as it can get, though. Donald Trump Jr. created a meme. I, I don't know if he did this himself. I would love to have seen Donald Trump Jr. like making a meme on an app on his phone or something. But he used a photograph from stock photo, I imagine, of a bowl of Skittles. Very plain picture. And the photographer who took that Skittles picture was actually a refugee himself. Now, this meme that Donald Trump Jr. Uh, put up was so offensive, and it's you can read it for yourself. It's comparing people to Skittles, and actually, the corporation behind Skittles was like, you can't, Skittles are candy, refugees are people. You, those are not, that's not a good analogy. Um, but David Kiddos, who is the 48-year-old 48 photographer, who was a refugee of Cyprus when he was trying to flee the Turkish, Turkish occupation, uh, said that this was not done with his permission, he never gave anyone the rights to use his photo, and he does not support Trump's politics and would never take his money for Trump to be able to use this photo. A of all, what I have to say about this, A of all, this is not like a dank meme. You need to work on your meme skills, Donald Trump Jr. B of all, David, you took a picture of Skittles, okay? So I don't know where your career is at right now, but me thinks that this is probably a really big deal for you as a photographer. At least people are seeing your art. Do we dare call it art? You took a picture of a bowl of candy. Let's not get our panties in a bunch. Jake, hopefully panties are in a bunch over on Facebook. These panties are bunched up to ridiculously high levels. Uh, Matt Zizzleman says, as the saying goes, the acorn doesn't fall far from the racist, misogynistic, xenophobic, distrustful, lying tree. That's a lot of adjectives. That is a lot of adjectives, Jake. Thank you so much. And because of Donald Trump Jr.'s horrible meme, I would like to enter into a meme war with him and offer, this is how a meme is done, you guys. This is a picture of a boy who's working at a pizza shop. His management said, Cody, you cannot use pizza labels as name tags. He is taking a selfie with the deluxe sausage name tag on his shirt. That's right, Cody. You're a deluxe sausage for sure. All right. Well, you guys can check us out over on Facebook at The Stream TV, and you're probably watching our stream there right now, but let's pivot on over to the Twitterverse. What is trending on Twitter? Well, we've got two hashtags for you today. Our first up is tying back to the whole Brad and Angelina breakup. Hashtag Brangelina is back in action party, people. Now, first we'll see an image of the New York Post. The cover of the New York Post <laughs> features Jennifer Aniston laughing her ass off with um, like an obituary signal of Brangelina being dead from 2004 to 2016. And then finally, we have Jennifer Aniston from Friends saying, congratulations, that was quite a waste of time. Ooh, burn, baby, burn. I cannot wait for Jennifer Aniston to do her first interview about this whole thing. I'm sure she'll handle it with grace and ease, but I really wish she wouldn't. 
Next up, maybe you guys have heard, Lady Gaga's music video debuted for her song, Perfect Illusion. And Lady Gaga herself tweeted out that the video got one million views in under an hour. Holy bejesus, you guys. And uh, Trevor Moran, of course, shared the uh, link to himself and said, the Perfect Illusion video is so good, WTF. I would love to know, what do you guys think of the Brangelina breakup, and what do you guys think about this Perfect Illusion music video? Is it everything you hope for more? To me, it was a little simple, yet still so far out for Lady Gaga because she's just wearing jean shorts, a t-shirt, and a ponytail. Why do I feel like this is now another one of her costumes? Um, all right, you guys, so let's see you on Twitter, at the Stream TV, and now we're gonna see what's happening on Instagram. The account at Friends of Bay is beyond hysterical, deliriously funny. First up, we've got a meme that they shared when someone asks what you've been up to and you've forgotten everything you've done in your entire life, I don't know. What, I don't know what I've been up to. Next up, a therapist asking, okay, so what's your earliest childhood memory? Ooh, that's hysterical. And also terrifying. Who would put a horse head on their dog? I sure would. Next up, finally, we have Stairway to Heaven featuring a whole bevy of baby English bulldogs each lining up on their own stair. Uh, that's totally a dream for me. That would be like, okay, I don't really know if I believe in marriage, but like if I did, that would be the dream proposal. Like here, I didn't get you a ring, but I got you eight puppies. <laughs> I would spend my life with that person. All right, make sure you find us on Instagram at the Stream TV, and find us on YouTube. All right, you guys, here is what's happening on YouTube. This video by Brave Wilderness is having people go berserk because the dude willingly got stung by an insect called the cow killer or the cow ant. The technical name is a Matilde, a Matilde. Uh, it's a super creepy little bug, and I guess this is Brave Wilderness's thing. So he has forcefully had scorpions and wasps sting him, and finally he trapped this cow killer and put it in a vessel on top of his arm, trying to get the bug to sting him, which it wouldn't. So then he takes out forceps, and he's like, I'm going to make it sting me. <laughs> and the poor thing is like, I don't want to do this. And he's like, you will. It's kind of like bug molestation, I'll call it that. I'll use the softer side of those things. Uh, I would love to know what you guys think. Are you watching Brave Wilderness on YouTube? And if you are, make sure you tweet at us at the Stream TV. I wanna know your thoughts. I wanna know if you think this guy is so cool for doing this or if he's absolutely out of his goddamn mind, which is kind of the family that I am leaning towards. All right, you guys, so on YouTube, we're at the Stream TV, and same goes with Snapchat, and here's what's trending on Snap, y'all. Get that Snap game strong. So apparently, uh, there's a new GoPro being unveiled for all of you camera nerds out there. So this new camera will be able to record up to 4K at 30 frames per second, which is super high quality stuff. And it also has a voice command where you can ask the camera to highlight part of your video by saying, that was so sick, dude. I love that the GoPro company knows their audience so well that that was so sick is not super far off from, you know, their audience's uh, verbiage, I suppose. Next up, we have the Tunnel of Love, which is an actual landmark you can visit in Klevon, Western Ukraine. And this is about a two mile long tunnel where the trees have grown into arches and a train is still passing right through this area. Now, legend has it, this is so cute, that if lovers go for a walk down the Tunnel of Love and make a wish, their wish will come true if they are truly in love. But if you're just like with your side chick, you know, your wish is not gonna come true and you might get bad karma. So keep that in mind, party people. All right, now for my favorite part of the show where we finally get to talk about Reddit. What is happening on Reddit? The users of Reddit and the uploaders of Reddit, you guys are my people. You're my tribe, y'all. So this first story is about a school lunch worker who refused to refuse food to a little boy at an elementary school who didn't have enough money to pay for his lunch. Thank you, Stacy uh, Kolstika. Kolstika, what's with these Polish last names? I honestly cannot handle it, people. Uh, she said that she'll never forget the look in the little boy's eyes uh, when she was told she had to refuse him a meal. 
Now, she is from Pennsylvania in the Cannon McMillan School District in Pennsylvania. This year put preventative measures against cafeteria workers serving hot meals to students who owed more than $25. Uh, but she said, Stacy said, as a Christian, I have issue with this. It's sinful and it's shameful is what it is. Um, I'm not sure this has much to do with you being a Christian, Stacy. You have a soul. We're gonna, you're a good person. You have compassion and empathy. Uh, your school district officials, however, are soulless, and I quietly hope that wherever they go for the rest of their lives, people are spitting in their food. That's karma, people, and I hope it's real mucusy, phlegmy loogies in all of your burgers. Take that. All right, take this, you guys. <laughs> We're going down. Planet Earth is, we're a sinking ship. So China's space station is apparently falling from the sky and is said to uh, hopefully burn up in the atmosphere in 2017. But some of the debris from the space station burnout may actually fall to Earth in populated areas. Now, again, this is speculation because China has no friggin' idea what's actually happening with their space station. They lost control of it, and like everything else, they're like, oh, the environment, whatever, it doesn't matter. Humans, no, 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 they're just our pets. Fucking China, why does this not shock me? And maybe this is just more reason for us to move to space. Uh, so at least America cares about the, oh, wait, we don't care about the environment. Just kidding, we're all going to hell in a handbasket. Here's who's not going to hell, though. These two high school footballers, if you weren't too young for me, boys, you'd be just my type. That's probably weird, but they saved cats. They saved the one cat. They saved one cat. Two boys, one cat. Um, so they were on their way to their high school football game, and they heard a shrill little shrieking noise. Meow, meow, meow. And they were like, yo, dude, let's go check this out. So they found a little cat who was stuck in a sewer drainage pipe near one of their homes. And when they leaned over the pipe, they saw a cat hanging on by their paw, by its little cat paws. And the cat was quickly losing strength. So they have no idea how it got down there, but they think it was someone's pet. They managed to scoop the kitty up, put the kitty on dry land, and immediately the cat ran off, ran away from the people into the woods. So they didn't get the thank you they deserve, but I'm sure they'll get pussy some way or another. Um, all right, all right. Jake, what are people saying on Reddit about these football players? Well, fo they're saying football players getting pussy? Who would have expected? That's that's honestly where my mind went to. It was oh, low-hanging no. fruit, but I'm glad someone said it. We're all on the pussy game. Yeah. Great, 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 great. Great for these dudes. Uh, next up, we have a hysterical picture of a caterpillar posing with grass. It's the little things in life that bring me joy. This, is, this has made my Wednesday way better than it was. Uh, it's just a caterpillar holding grass. That's it. That's the story. And uh, finally, we have our last image coming from Reddit, which is a very rare flower called the Chinese black bat flower. And this flower is actually part of the yam family. So while you can't eat this flower, you can eat some of its siblings, right? That's kind of exciting. Um, well, thank you, Reddit, and thank you, everyone. Again, find us everywhere at the Stream TV. But for now, I'm going to toss it on over to my boy, my main man, Johnny Loquasto. Johnny, what's happening in your world? Well, much like Corey Feldman, I'm about to go for it. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> I still haven't seen that performance yet. I need, was it that amazing? I oh, my God, it was so bad. It was so weird. It was bad weird. in a great way, though. I Just love Just watch bad. it. I would love to hear what you think. I love bad. Speaking of which, <laughs> now it's my turn. All right, here we go. So uh, Google's new app for vacations apparently started all the way back going to 280 years ago. Here's the deal. I feel like I should have a hammer and a sickle uh, talking about this, but we're talking about Russia, okay? Kaliningrad is a Russian seaport in the Baltic Sea, basically, uh, located in between Poland and Lithuania, you know, the part of Eastern Europe nobody wants to go to. <laughs> so back in the 18th century, it included two islands that was connected by seven bridges that was kind of difficult to get around. So a Swiss, Swiss mathematician, God, say that twice, uh, Leonard Euler basically started what is known as geometry of place and graph theory because he kind of went around and tried to figure out how you can get around by using the seven bridges by not crossing it more than once. Why? Because he was a big nerd back then and that was the thing to do. So this week, Google launched an app called Trips, which basically gives you a way to sightsee different areas of the world. Say you're going to Spain or France or Italy, you could tell, hey, Google, this is exactly where I'm going and the time frame I'm going there, and they will tell you exactly what to see, like all the major points. And they admitted that it includes a lot of the same math that Euler used 280 years ago. 
So in other words, download the app, take a trip, and let your phone do the math for you. So guys, uh, phones are officially doing everything for us, even vacation. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? That's All right, so Big Brother, it's watching us from the ocean, y'all. Here's a <laughs> artist Trevor Paglin has basically proven that the government has tapped hundreds of cables on the bottom of the ocean floor. He says 99% of the world's info goes through these like little tiny tubes, right? So he's always been kind of a conspiracy theorist, if you will. He also worked on a documentary called Citizen Four that kind of showed what Edward Snowden did, whether or not you, you know, whatever you think about him, that's your deal. So he spent two years studying this leaked data and researched everything and then figured out where he thought these cables might be in the ocean. Took a trip to Miami, learned how to scuba dive, and dove just off the coast of Miami. Turns out he found the cables exactly where he thought he would. So, ladies and gentlemen, just like Sebastian said in The Little Mermaid, under the sea, they're spying on you. Wow. And finally, if you're looking to cry this early in the morning, uh, get ready, okay? So, two veterinarians recently got married in Colorado just a couple of weeks ago. And this is proof that pets can be the greatest things in our lives, okay? So... She had a beloved dog named Charlie Bear. The poor thing is 15 years old, developed a brain tumor, was having a lot of seizures, right? They decided as vets, it was time to put him down. Miraculously out of nowhere, the dog stopped having seizures, it stopped having bad health issues, and it was actually moving around okay. They said, oh, well, okay, let's, let's see how he does. The dog made it to the wedding, was able to walk down the aisle and enjoy the ceremony. Now, they did have to carry the dog out because he just didn't have the strength, you know, to, to walk any further, but you can see pictures of it. He's incredibly happy at the wedding. And eight years, uh, I'm sorry, eight days later, they actually had to put him down because it was time for him to go. But he had a full life, 15 years, and he did what any good best friend would do. He made sure that the bride was safe and secure with her new husband. And with that said, I got to go and adopt a dog immediately. Yeah, you do, Johnny. I am tearing up over here. I've got chills. I am sweating. You know, that story I, did a lot to me. I saw this story at 2 in the morning. I, I guess I'm most emotional at 2 in the morning. <laughs> and I was like, I'm, this story isn't even funny. It's just adorable. It's a vulnerable hour, Johnny. I totally yeah. get it. It's very quiet. It's yeah. peaceful. Well, thank you so much, Johnny. Make sure you follow him on all the places at... Johnny LaQuasto? Jay Quasto. Jay Quasto. Right. Thank you, Jake. And thank you guys for watching Stream On here on the Stream.tv. We'll be back tomorrow, same place, same time. Kind of new people. Check you out. Check me out. What? Deuces. Go. Please. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. While you're here, give this video a like, a share, a kiss, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay updated on all the freshest vids coming to you daily.